and uh, the title of the some uh, title of my sermon this Sabbath is Nike Every Day. Just do it. It's a very familiar uh, uh, phrase that you perhaps that you hear uh, not often, but in the world of sports, you always hear this word uh, just uh, do it. But before we do it. Uh, let's uh, have a word of prayer one more time. A loving and heavenly Father, help us, Lord, as we open uh, your word in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, what it means to be, a, uh, to be overcomers, what it means to live a victorious life each day. Help us to understand because you are victorious and you want to give us victory. I pray that you uh, speak to us as we open your word the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. All of this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, throughout this uh, quarter, actually, I'm uh, every Sabbath I preach. And uh, we are doing a series on the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is a series uh, touching every uh, major chapters in the book of uh, Revelation. And in fact, today we touch in Revelation chapter 5 and we touch on uh, Jesus as the Lamb of uh, Lamb of God, and we see a crisis in in heaven. Uh, chapter four, chapter five is one of my favorite uh, uh, chapter to to read because in the midst of uh, crisis, especially right now, you know, God uh, Jesus changed the attention of John. Uh, instead of looking at all the crisis, all the problems down here on earth, come, I bring you to the throne room, and He's give a big picture about God who sits on the throne and who is in control of everything. Yeah. And Revelation chapter 3, verse 21 is actually the, uh, the setting stage for that, uh, for that picture where the shifting of the vision, uh, what is on earth to what is on uh, heaven. Now, um, um, I want to begin with this um, uh, illustration. Uh, back in the uh, Summer Olympics in 2004, there was one particular runner who was not uh, so popular at that time, but became very popular after this event. Uh, his name was uh, Liu Xiang. He was the first Chinese gold medalist in this uh, 110 meter huddles yeah, for, for China in, the, in, in that uh, 2004 Summer Olympics. Now, because he became the first uh, gold medalist for that event and uh, for China, his name became very popular in the country, uh, in, in China. And one big company, as you know, Nike took an advantage. Uh, seeing that uh, Liu had, you know, had, gone, had, uh, had become victorious and had made the nation, nation proud, Everywhere you go in the country, you will find his picture on billboards. So if you go to Nike store at that year, you will always see you will see his his picture. So he became very popular. They advertise him everywhere. Yeah. Now, when you look at this logo, yeah, when you look at this logo, you know this logo very well, right? And I believe some of us we we are using we are using them our sport shoes our sport attire we we use them we like we like it, but you know that uh, for the Chinese, uh, they consider Nike as a coolest brand. I have few Chinese friends from China, and they like to use Nike. For them, is a very you know, is a, is a coolest brand because. You know why? It is not about the product. This is not about the product. It is about a symbol that they find success for the nation, especially for the new middle classes. Yeah. Now, Nike, they thought went to China to sell their product. They went to China to sell status, lifestyle, value being and uh, the idea behind it is victory so liu became uh, a, a trademark yeah a trademark nike became uh, a trademark they don't sell product they sell 
lifestyle they sell being so in other words anyone who uses nike brand they see victory when they think about nike brand they think about liu who won the uh, who won the summer olympics nothing is impossible you can do it you know so they they see they see a brand of uh, status so when i wear it i feel I am someone who is victory, yeah. So the market, them market status, lifestyle value. This is what uh, they've been uh, marketing, being a, a champion. Now, interesting. When you go to the book of Revelation, you find that victory is is a recurring theme in the apocalypse. Uh, in in uh, yeah. And one of the book's key motif, right? you will find pictures of victory. Because in Revelation, you will see a victory savior. You don't see a sacrifice savior. Jesus is victory. And this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is victory. You see the symbol of Jesus sitting on the, on the horse, symbolize that he is victory. Yeah, you see that uh, uh, Jesus sitting on the throne, uh, Revelation chapter 4, uh, symbolized that he is in control of every situation. You see Jesus as the high priest yeah, in verse, uh, verse uh, chapter 5, uh, as the king of the universe, symbolized that um, he gives command, symbolized that he, the key of salvation is in, in him. And he promised victory. In fact, in all the Bible texts that you see here that I quote here, you find that uh, all the word here is who he who overcomes. So victory is a recurring theme in the book of uh, Revelation. Now, when we go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Now, this is not the first time where the word, the phrase to him who overcomes, it first mentioned in Revelation chapter 2, verse Seven. However, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, where it says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. This verse is written in the context of the Laodicea church. And uh, we know that the Laodicea church symbolizes the spiritual condition of our church today. And Jesus told to them, him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. This is one of the most uh, great promise among all other promise that God gave to the other seven churches, to the church of Laodicea. This was something that was something grand, a promise that he gave to the church, especially in the last day. Now, the word overcome in, um, in Greek, uh, the, original, the original word is nikaeo. Yeah, that's the word. And somehow you can, you, know, you can imagine, oh, that's where the word Nike came from, right? The Greek word nikaeo. And it simply means to be victor, to be a victor, to be victorious, to overcome something, to conquer something that is very impossible and you have conquered it. You are a conqueror. You are an uh, overcomer. Yeah. So the word overcome, Nikae, you find in Revelation. In Revelation means to to be victorious. Now, in the Greek mythology, because uh, the background of the book of Revelation, as as we know, where John wrote to the seven churches, right, and they were influenced also by these uh, Greek mythologies. You find that the goddess Nike, uh, originally pronounced as Nike, that's the, that's the pronunciation, was the personification of victory. So the Greeks, they worship this one goddess called Nike, and the god of sports. Yeah? And when they worship the god of Nike, the goddess of Nike, uh, they think about being victorious yeah and uh, the christians are uh, at that time they were also very influenced by this uh, greek uh, mythology yeah 
but uh, the God calls them, Jesus calls them to be faithful and focus on Jesus alone, not on the goddess uh, Nike. Now, however, the Roman mythology, on the other hand, they call Nike as Victoria. So Victoria is a goddess of uh, the, the Roman. And, and for them, the, her, her power extends in many areas of Asian Greek life. This is also including, uh, including athletics. Yeah. So for, for the Romans, they associate Nike as uh, Victoria. Yeah. Now, perhaps this is why the legendary shoe and sports equipment manufactured borrowed the name of this goddess, Nike. Yeah, you say Nike shoe. Yeah, so anyone who wears Nike shoe, you have, you have a certain, <laughs> a certain uh, power, maybe. So that's what they, they, they believe, you know. So you have, uh, you are someone who is victorious. Is you feel cool in wearing wearing it. But uh, by the way, Nike shoe is very expensive here in uh, Malaysia. You know, I, I used to go for uh, marathons. I used to run. Um, I can't afford to buy a Nike shoes. Too expensive, 500, 600. Wow. But it's very, very, very comfortable. You know, it depends on the uh, your size of your leg, the arch of your, your foot, yeah, whether you are mid-arch, whether you're flat, it all depends. Yeah, and it all depends on the event that you that you uh, that you that you join. Uh, it's very expensive, but it's very comfortable. I couldn't afford it, so I used another uh, more. Uh, more cheaper uh, shoes uh, and uh, less uh, branded like uh, New Balance, you know, uh, cheaper compared to Nike. Yeah, but uh, I don't, uh, it is designed, it is designed for athletes, yeah, the shoe, and anyone who wears it, you feel, uh, you feel, you feel great, you know, you feel that uh, you are strong, that you are ready to conquer, conquer the race. Yeah, so this was the idea behind um, mythology behind that uh, uh, victory yeah, to, over, to overcome. And the early Christians, they understood this because they were influenced by the pagan, uh, pagan worship around them. And um, they understood this very well. Now, when we come to the word, the, the, the phrase, who overcomes? Uh, when John wrote this, we find that the form of the verb that Jesus used when he says he who overcome is in a present active participle. Now it implies, and what does it implies? It implies this. It implies continuous overcoming or continuous victory. To be victory every day, continue. Not just in one event, but continue. You know, like an athlete, when they complete one event, yeah, when they complete one event, they don't only think about that particular event. They always think about the next event to next event to come. <laughs> I, I remember while I was before, while I was very active joining running. You know, after finish one event, we always think about the next event to come. So we train, we we continue. You know, continue to overcome. If this in this event we didn't do well, okay, next event we will, we try to improve. Uh, certain things, right? So uh, continue, yeah, continuous victory. And this is something very interesting. You know, when, when John wrote, when God, Jesus gave him that, that, that vision, you know, he told, it implies he who overcome is a pattern of life of a believer. Yeah, it's a pattern of life of a believer. It points to the, the person self-identity, their own being, and um, they, that they are overcomers. And the book of Revelation primarily employs the image of conquering as a, mili a mi militaristic one closely connected to the language of battle. You know, brothers and sisters, we are just like the early Christians also. We are facing all kinds of battles, spiritual battles, just like the church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna facing persecution, the church of Ephesus, they were losing their first love. The church of uh, Pegamon, they were, you know, uh, compromised the truth. Uh, the church of Laodicea, they were lukewarm. Yeah. 
And so God calls them, Jesus calls them to be over, overcomers. Um, this is a language of battle. You need to be, you need to win the battle and I can give you the victory. And now the good news that we find here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21 is this. We can't have victory unless Christ gives it to us. Amen. In other words, victory is in Jesus himself. In other words, to be victorious, we must cooperate with, with Jesus. And this is the book of Revelation. This is the book of Jesus Christ. And we will never experience victory unless we cooperate with him. The question today that we want to answer is that what does it mean to overcome? Apa artinya untuk menang? What does it mean to overcome every day? And what are we supposed to overcome? And more important, how do we overcome? And let me propose three points of what it means to overcome in this uh, sermon. First of all, what it means to overcome is that overcoming has moral implication. Yeah. Jesus wants us to be victorious in spiritual and also in moral realities that determine our eternity. So being victorious is something spiritual as well. It has a moral implication to us. And here in Revelation, we find that Jesus wants us to be overcomer. Yeah. While he gives us to... While he gives us the strength to overcome, while he is the overcomer himself, he wants us to also to be an overcomer. Whenever we face trials, we face opposition, we face temptation, we face fear, spiritual, moral compromise, Jesus says, be an overcomer. I want to bring you to one particular Bible text that uh, is dear to me also, and I believe it's dear to you. This is in found in First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. It says here, "No temptation has taken you except such as is common to man." I want you to underline the word "common." Yeah, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, brothers and sisters, there are temptation, according to Paul here, uh, what the Bible calls it as common. Yeah? What does it mean, common? Yeah? And what does it mean to be overcome over common temptation? First and foremost, common is that uh, facing temptation is something that is common whether you are a believer or whether you are not believer whether uh, you are associated in any religious uh, group or whatever temptation is something is common everyone face it am i right it is part of life and uh, you are not alone whether you are old whether you are young everyone face temptation so uh, temptation is something that is uh, that is common and those temptation will be always, always there. Temptation will be always there. Yeah, it will never run away. The only, the only thing is that you run away from temptation. Yeah, temptation will always chase you, but you can run away uh, from, from temptation. Temptation that you can resist. Uh, this is something interesting. In other words, you have the power to, uh, to resist it. So Paul was saying that uh, you know there are something that are common, common temptation, temptation that you can actually you can visit. give you example. Yeah, uh, maybe you are tempted to eat, let's say to eat donut in between meal, and you're not supposed to eat in between meals. You know it goes against the law of health, but you know somehow you are so tempted to eat a donut or something in between meals and your mom said, ah, you cannot eat, you, or you only can eat after, after lunch, after your meal. I always say that to, my, to uh, my boy and my girl. You know, when time to eat, you have to eat. Yeah, this is not the time to eat. So sometimes they will just sneak, they will find something in the refrigerator, what they can eat. 
And when it comes to uh, the time of eating, uh, hard for them to finish their food because their tummy has been filled with other, other things. Yeah? Now, but we have the power to, to resist it. When we are tempted, for example, and you know it's not healthy for, for the body, we can say, ah, no, we can, uh, we can postpone it. This is another way. We can postpone it and say, no, later, after, after lunch, I can, I can eat it. So there are temptations that we can uh, resist. We can say no. And another thing is that God won't remove all the temptation, like what we read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God leaves it some for us. It is part of teaching us to rely on, on him. So he takes away and he leaves some temptation that we can, that we can, you know, we can face. And, and uh, it is part of us to learn, to teach us to always to depend on, on God. And, um, uh, there is a good side of having problems. The good side is that it teaches us to rely on God. The other side, it it demoralizes us or it uh, it brings us down and keep us away from coming to to the Lord. Yeah, that's the bad side. But let's look at the good side of uh, of it. And so we find that Jesus wants us to win over over something that is daily to us. Perhaps negative feelings, and I call this bad spirit. You know, sometimes we have that. Uh, bad spirit or mind tend to think about uh, bad things and distract our, our emotion. Uh, perhaps bad habits, sexual passion, unforgiving spirit, unfaithfulness to, to God. So here we find that Jesus wants us to overcome in those areas of life that really matters. And he longs for us to be successful in those Everyday struggles that uh, define who we really are, how we how we feel, our our habits, our attitudes, our choices, our values, and uh, behavior. In other words, our character or the whole walk of our our life. So becoming an overcomer. So we find that overcoming is in in moral and spiritual matter. Overcoming also includes obedience to God's word. Overcoming also includes in maintaining spiritual patience. Uh, this is something uh, very, very challenging to many of us uh, today, especially when our church is all closed, right? You know, and uh, we are forced to, to sit in front of a screen, uh, worship online through Zoom like this. Um, we in our in our church we we struggle with this because many of our church members also uh, they have hard time to to join us worship and then some even backslide. Uh, that's the sad thing, you know, uh, backslide and we try to look for them. So in times like this, to maintain spiritual patience is something very challenging. And uh, I really, I'm really thankful to see that many of you are here with your families. I believe, even though, you know, uh, we have, I can't see how many, we have 23 participants here. I believe our families are also sitting behind with that big screen and uh, joining us also in worship yeah, on this online. I know it's very challenging. It's challenging also to, uh, to me to sit down, especially on Sabbath. Sabbath is always the most busiest a uh, day for me because I've one event after after another until late uh, uh, evening. Yeah. So I have training also after this uh, in the in the afternoon. Um, in times like in times like this, how is our spiritual patient? Are we still passionate for for the Lord? Yeah, and uh, we are going through a time of. Uh, a time of trial, I could say. This is like a fire drill. You know, the Bible talks about a time of trouble that, that will come. And uh, this is somehow like a fire drill to prepare us for that great event. And being overcoming is to maintain our spiritual patient, whether it's physical worship or is uh, uh, 
or uh, virtual worship like this. Overcoming also refers to the whole life of a believer being an overcomer. Therefore, overcoming is being victorious in moral and spiritual matters. So it, it covers a wide range of moral and spiritual issues. And when we come to the last part of the book of Revelation, yeah, Jesus said in Revelation 21 verse 7, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now, I want you to look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Here, the Bible is very clear to why this group of people are destroyed. You see the list of them, unbeliever, believing, abominable, murderers, all of this. They are mentioned them. Why? Why are they being destroyed? Because they are coward. And coward is the opposite of what? Overcome. Yeah, there is the opposite of overcome. In other words, they did not prioritize spiritual things. They did not learn to overcome common temptation, become overcomer. So while they were alive, instead of overcoming, they indulge in those common temptation. And what you see here are lists of common uh, uh, temptation. So they are coward. They have not learned to be over. Commerce. And therefore, overcoming has more implication and eternal consequences. That's point number one. Number two, what does it mean to overcome? Second is the ability to both discern and hold on to God's truth amidst the devil's delusion. Brothers and sisters, we live in a day of age, generation eh, that is full of deception. Yeah. Satan is working very hard to deceive us from obeying God. You know, we encounter powerful, spiritual, doctrinal, uh, social, political, cultural, even dem demonic forces that uh, fundamentally uh, affect our faith in God. Sickness like this right, right now that we are facing yeah, um, affects our faith in in faith in God. And uh, we know that the devil is working hard to, this, uh, to deceive us, to turn away our attention from worshiping, worshiping, worshiping him. Now, in the Bible, you find that there are two great cities. Yeah? And these two great cities symbolize uh, two groups of people. We see Babylon, what's, uh, that symbolizes confusion. We see Jerusalem symbolize uh, truth. Yeah, self-dependent, yeah, depend on God, people, uh, the, uh, people of Jerusalem. Pleasure-driven, yeah, Babylon supplies a pleasure-driven, money, sex, position, and etc. and etc. Well, as Jerusalem symbolizes people who obey God's, uh, God's word, who are faithful to, to Jesus. Uh, Babylon symbolizes also the mark of the beast, while uh, Jerusalem symbolizes the seal of God. So we see that here, Revelation exposed two groups of citizens. Yeah? One is those who are overcomers. Another one are those who are cowards, right? That's what we say a while ago. And these people groups are symbolized by these two prominent uh, cities. Yeah? So where are we? Yeah. And being overcoming, brothers and sisters, is involved also in this dissociating oneself from a corrupt culture, you know? So overcoming uh, involves not only we uh, holding a different sets of uh, values such as justice, uh, equity, you know, uh, stewardship, uh, generosity, being generous, being simplicity, spirituality, truthfulness, but overcoming also involves dissociating ourselves with corrupt culture, religious institution that, lead, that links to sensuality, immorality, consumerism, uh, religious compromise, and etc. So not associating with this corrupt culture. 
And in the Bible, we find that God calls us, particularly in the book of Revelation, calls us to be fundamentally different in character and life. You know, in Bahasa, I call this orang pelik. You know, I always, uh, we always talk this in my Bahasa group. What does it mean to be, to be different, fundamentally, fundamentally different, to be unique, to be uh, orang pelik? <laughs> For those of you who understand bahasa orang pelik, you know, when people see you, they say, ah, this, this fellow is very strange. Uh, people worship on Sunday, but uh, he goes to church on uh, Saturday. And this fellow doesn't eat any seafood. He only eats uh, vegetables uh, and, and rice, but he doesn't touch all those other, uh, other meat. Uh, very different, fundamentally different. His beliefs is totally uh, totally different, but we are called to be to be different, being overcomers, uh, being to be to be different. We set we hold a set of uh, values that are very different, fundamentally are very different. And I always used to say to you know to my my own church members, it's okay to be different in this day and age. It's okay, and it's good to be also to be different and use that as a as a advantage yeah to be a witness for the lord to be to be different yeah. so and god calls us to be different in character and in life listen to this in revelation chapter 14 verse 4 these are the ones who were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are the ones who follow the lamb Wherever he goes, this will redeem from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. In verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you see that God's people are fundamentally, they are different. Number three, what does it mean to overcome? We are to, over, we are to overcome as Jesus did. Jesus is our example. The question is, are we willing to die every day? Yeah. Are we willing to spend time with God in prayer and in, uh, in our Bible studies? Uh, there is a quotation that I, I love from Ellen White. Uh, it's in, uh, hold on, uh, the Gospel Workers, page 100. <laughs> Uh, page 100, it says that uh, strength comes from, I try to paraphrase this, uh, comes from three things, when we do three things. First of all, when we pray, when we study our Bible, and the third one is when we search our heart, selidik hati kita. Power comes when we do these three things. We have strength. Yeah. When we pray, when we study the word of God, and when we look, evaluate ourselves, yeah. see the wrong things and confess them all to, to the Lord. Jesus became an overcomer while he was on earth because he died every day. He surrendered his life to, to God. Are we willing to die every day? Yeah. Number two, we are overcome we are to overcome as Jesus did. Are we willing to sacrifice for God? Yeah. And this time of uh, period, this pandemic, are we still willing to, to do something for the Lord? And so being overcomer is also be willing to sacrifice. To, to overcome as Jesus did also implies that we are willing to forgive like Jesus. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, uh, Jesus died not only for the sins, uh, but he forgave every action, every uh, what, uh, what people did to him on the cross. And while he was dying, while they were persecuting him, Jesus said uh, to God the Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He forgive them. You know? He died for their sins and he forgave. Uh, the wrong doing. Are we willing to forgive like Jesus? So brothers and sisters, Jesus wants us to overcome. Today, he wants you to be an overcomer. 
because it has more implication. Number one, because he wants us to be among the righteous. And number two, because he is the best example to how I should live my life. And therefore, the message that I would like to leave from Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Jesus wants you to be an overcomer and he is ready to help each one of us. Without him, we are nothing. Without him, we cannot be an overcomer. And he wants us to be overcomer with, with him. So as he has overcome sin for us, he can help us to overcome as well. When I am defeated by life, he gives me the hope of victory. And this is why I personally love Jesus and I hope you also love Jesus too. Revelation 3 verse 21 says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. May the Lord continue to bless you and continue to keep you. Happy Sabbath and God bless.